Hey photographers, if you have a video shoot later today with the Nikon Z7, in the next five minutes I'll give you the basic information you need to get started quickly. And then if you have time, stick around for some hacks and advanced tips, including shooting with an external recorder and using N-Log. We're shooting today at the YouTube studio in Toronto, and I'm starting with the Z7 in its default configuration. I've just done all of the resets. And this is firmware 1.02. There's no significant video functional change, but always upgrade to the latest version. Now, the Z7 uses XQD cards, which are all fast enough to handle the Z7's video data rates. The 4K data rate is 120 megabits, and that uses just over a gig a minute. The high quality HD rate is 25 megabits. A gigabyte holds about five minutes of HD. Back up the data and format your card before you start shooting. Switch to video mode using the switch on the back. The nice thing about this is that the exposure and other settings are independent for video and stills, which means not a lot of settings need to be adjusted as you go back and forth. Turn the mode dial to M. Now I'm using the 24 to 70 kit lens. Confirm that the focus switch on the lens is at A. For frame size and rate, I recommend 4K 30p. It's high quality, and even if you're outputting to HD, provides additional flexibility. I'll cover slow motion in the advanced section. I use the MOV file type. The video format and quality is the same for both. The difference is audio. MOV records PCM, MP4 records AAC. Either is a good choice. Although we set the mode dial to M for manual exposure, you can keep adjustments simple by using auto ISO. Quality isn't very good above 6400, so that's where I set the maximum and I set the default to 125 with auto ISO on. I recommend setting the flicker reduction to auto and unless you're using a tripod, vibration reduction on. It's designed for stills, but it does help handheld shooting. A second video only option, electronic VR, which is available for 4K but not all modes, adds additional stabilization and a slight crop. While better than average for a static handheld shot, it doesn't replace a tripod or a gimbal for moving shots. Use the I menu to set the meter. Matrix is generally useful, but if you are shooting performers on stage or other situations where you want to keep the highlights down, use highlight. And there's a lot of information on the screen, so press disp to simplify what we're seeing. Use the back dial to set the shutter speed to 1 over 60. That should give you a properly exposed scene. Use the front dial to open the aperture to f4. That defocuses the background to help your subjects stand out. If your artistic judgment needs more of the image in focus, close the iris to a smaller aperture. If you want to check your exposure, press disp to see the histogram. It's preferable to have the display centered, but let your own judgment guide you. Press the EV key and use the back dial to adjust. Now, if you're shooting outside and the scene is too bright, you'll need an ND filter. And if you're inside and it's dark, consider using a shutter speed of 1 30th, as long as there's not a lot of movement. Otherwise, add more light or increase the ISO. Press the ISO button and use the front dial to turn off auto and then the back dial to select. Although the histogram is a useful tool, use your own judgment. Don't be a slave to the meter. Press disp again to check if the shot is level, if that's what you want. Set the focus mode to full time AF and the area to auto area. The on screen left button activates touch focus I find this useful, although it's not fast. Custom setting A4 activates face detection. Useful if there are people in your video and you want them in focus. Keep zooms to a minimum with this lens. Focus wanders as you adjust the focal length. Select any white balance except auto, as auto makes adjustments while you shoot, making editing difficult. Select a picture control. And this is a question of personal taste and artistic judgment. You can select black and white here. 
For a neutral look, select either flat or neutral and make your color adjustments in editing. In a quiet studio environment like the YouTube studio, as long as you're close to the camera, the onboard mics provide better than average recordings. But the Z7 does support external mics, which I'll cover in the advanced section. Keep it simple by leaving the sensitivity at auto. Enable the attenuator to stop loud sounds from distorting. Wide range will provide a better quality recording even for voice. Turn wind noise reduction on if you're shooting outside, but this setting is only marginally useful and also reduces quality. If it's windy, use an external mic. Here's a quick hack if the lens isn't zooming in far enough. Change the image area from FX to DX. On this sensor, that's still plenty more resolution than the 8 megapixels needed for 4K video. That crops into about 1.5, so the 24 to 70 provides the effective area of 36 to 105. Press the video button to record. Custom setting G3 uses the OK button if that's better for you. One neat feature, the shutter button can take stills, although they are low resolution while you're recording video without interrupting the recording. Nice. Well, those are the basics, but if you have a few minutes, stay with me for some advanced tips. A quick exposure hack. Custom setting G6 is an alternate to using the highlight meter. Stripes can display left or right with various RGB levels. 224 would be 100% on a waveform. Stripes will appear on objects over that threshold. Now the first thing that I do is capture a custom white balance and note that this needs to be done for every scene or lighting change. Luckily, it's easy. Select Preset Manual and press the OK key until the square appears. Point it at a white reference and press OK again. Data acquired and done. Incidentally, using the menu, the white balance can be shifted using the blue amber or green magenta axis. Too bad this screen isn't interactive. Now let's go back to picture control. There are a lot of adjustments that you can make to create your look in camera. And again, these are video specific settings stored independently of the stills picture controls. After the standard settings, the Z7 includes a selection of filters to create a specific style, mood, or atmosphere. And then for the standard settings, further controls to adjust sharpness, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue. These generally provide a good deal of latitude and control and are worth exploring and testing to create a look. The Z7's autofocus works reasonably well, but if your situation has a consistent focus distance, I recommend you use the I menu to select manual focus. The magnify keys can punch in for an expanded view for a more accurate focus. Or use custom setting D10 to activate focus peaking. There are three levels and four colors to select. If you use focus peaking, Use the video specific custom control G2 to set a key to turn it on and off, as it can be distracting and the zebra highlight isn't available when it's on. Now, I use an external recorder, primarily to capture the menu and the on screen display for this video, but it can be a useful tool as it doesn't observe the 30 minute limit imposed on internal recordings. And I'm using an Atomos Ninja Inferno, which can record at substantially higher data rates than the XQD card. As well, the HDMI output supports 10-bit recording as well as N-Log. Now, I do appreciate that Nikon uses the larger than typical HDMI connector and provides a clip for tension relief and accidental disconnect. In video mode, the only output to HDMI is clean. No menu overlay is available. Connecting an HDMI cable doesn't disable the LCD or the viewfinder. The frame size and rate selected on the movie menu are applied to the output. The Z7 does not output HD 120 or 100 frame modes or the slow motion settings. The HDMI settings are relegated to the setup panel. Selecting a specific output resolution can down-res, for example from 4K to HD, 
but not the reverse. If you have HD selected, setting this to 2160 will not generate 4K output. The output range settings can limit the output to the RGB range 16 to 235, useful in some broadcast situations. Activating external recording control enables the camera start and stop command to start and stop the external recording using the Atomos protocol. With an external recorder, use custom setting C3 to set the standby timer to no limit to stop the auto shutoff. 10-bit mode increases the color depth and your ability to manipulate the image in post-production. This may not have much value if you're vlogging on YouTube, but will be useful if you have higher standards or requirements. In 10-bit mode, the viewfinder is not available. N-Log is Nikon's advanced gamma curve, providing the ability to capture a wider dynamic range. This can only be recorded on an external recorder and is best used with 10-bit. So to show you the dynamic range that N-Log can provide, we're at DSC Labs in Mississauga shooting their Xyla chart. On this chart, every rectangle from the left is one f-stop lower in light. Using the flat profile, I'm exposing the leftmost square to the 224 highlight, which reads as 100% on the Atomos waveform with ISO 800, the minimum available using N-Log, that's F22. Now without N-Log, the dynamic range is about 8 stops. And then we switch to N-Log, and the dynamic range compresses, enabling us to open the aperture to F6.3, revealing about 12 rectangles, 12 stops of dynamic range. As always, I would recommend that you use the standard curve for your productions, and use N-Log only in situations where the wide dynamic range, a combination of bright sun and shadow, demands it. In situations where a wide range isn't needed, N-Log may reduce contrast and detail in mid-exposure areas, but this is less of a factor with 10-bit. N-Log is not a magic key to cinematic or higher quality recording. Use the Frame Size and Rate menu to select one of the three HD in-camera slow motion options down to five times with 24 frames. These are silent modes with a data rate of about 25 megabits. For a little more control, record HD at 120 frames and slow it down in post. If you're producing 30 frame like I am, that allows for 25% without frame interpolation. Now this setting does record audio and records at 40 megabits, so by the time you've slowed it to one quarter, that's effectively 10. Use the stills menu to create a time-lapse movie. In addition to selecting the interval and the recording time, the image area and frame rate and size can be set. This feature is not available when an external monitor is connected. Now, if you want more control, you can set an interval timer to save images. Then it's up to you to assemble them into a video. I would only use the sound recorded from the internal mics for background and ambient sound. For my shoots, I use a lapel mic, and for this shoot, I'm using the YouTube Studio Sony Wireless Kit with the mic taped to the inside of my glasses. If you have access to a shotgun mic and a boom operator, that will probably provide better quality sound. Set the levels from the mic sensitivity control panel using meters underneath to judge the right level. Remember that it's easy to increase a low-level recording, but impossible to remove distortion from one with two high levels. Nikon's SnapBridge app can be useful, particularly as the LCD doesn't rotate forward. And there are no settings in video mode in the app, so configure everything, including exposure, before connecting. That's it. I hope your shoot goes well, and I do enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. And then go out and shoot until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks.